Welcome back to Titan Vans. I'm Matt North, CEO and founder. Today we're gonna to be showcasing a brand new custom build on a Sprinter 144 all-wheel drive. This build was inspired by our Ultra 144 model, but the customer opted to make some substantial changes both on the exterior and on the interior. This is what makes it a custom build. We started from the ground up working with the customer, took some inspiration from some of our models that we offer, but designed something unique that met their needs, and they selected some great exterior and interior upgrades that we do offer on a lot of our models. Some of these options though do fall outside of our normal offerings and so we're going to go into detail about the options that were selected on this build from both the exterior and the interior. We're going to start on the exterior of the van so let's jump in to some of the options that were selected. To start off we're going to talk about the wheels and tires. On this build we opted for the Black Rhino alloy wheels with a BFG TKO2 tire. Now this is the all-wheel drive model from Sprinter, which has the same ground clearance and initial factory lift as the 4x4 that was available from 18 to 22. 23 forward though, these are all going to be all-wheel drive options, and the largest tire you can fit without any modifications here is a 265-70R17. Now you can go a little bit bigger if you stick with the 16 inch rim, but when we're going up to these alloy aftermarkets, we typically will go up to a 17 inch wheel. It makes finding tires a little bit easier. Now, the reason for upgrading these is the alloy wheels are gonna be a little bit lighter weight. Certainly they have a much better aesthetic than the factory wheels that come with Mercedes. Uh, but you can also get some nice features uh, like stem protectors if you're gonna be going off road. You can get these a little bit more durable, again, for off-road use, and then especially the tires where you're gonna see the best performance upgrade. The factory tires that come from Mercedes are great for on-road use and for fair weather, but as soon as you're gonna hit any sort of snow, uh, mud, or sand, definitely gonna to wanna to upgrade the rubber to make sure you get where you're going. All right, moving on to the rear of the van, we got a lot going on. So here on the driver's side, we have our ladder tire combo. Great option to move this spare tire out from underneath the vehicle and onto the back doors. Now, the reason to do this, again, is if you're going to be off-road, typically if you're going to need to change a flat tire, it's not usually in the most convenient location. It's not level ground. You could be bottomed out in the back. Your vehicle could be so low it's hard to get a jack into there. If then you have to get underneath there somehow and drop the cage down and slide a tire out to then get your spare on, it can be a real pain. So by having it up here on the back door, we make it a lot easier to access the spare tire in case we need it. So that's one of the big reasons for mounting it on the back doors. Now, the ladder, pretty self-explanatory, gets us access up onto that roof rack, so if we need to maintain equipment up there. If we have a walkable deck up on top, we can use the ladder to gain access up there. So nice to kind of just pair these together and make it multifunctional for that driver's side. Now, there's a couple of different ladder options that we offer. This rear door ladder, while it is a good option, it does have a very high initial step height, okay? So if you're not comfortable with that, we definitely recommend the side mount ladder, but even for me, you got to hike your foot up there, right, to get that first step. Then you can kind of use these small steps. You can step on top of the ladder if needed to get up here. But again, it's a, you know, you got to be flexible and comfortable to get up to that first step. Once you, if you do the side mount ladder, it has the a very low initial rung height. The initial rung is going to be down here. So very comfortable and easy to get up and down the ladder. And it's more of a traditional ladder in that you have, you know, full rungs top to bottom. So something worth considering, but these are a good option, especially if you want to get that rear tire out from underneath the van. All right, move over to the passenger side. So this is a B2 carrier box and bike. So you can see we got the poles up top. You can now use these poles to mount bike carriers onto them. Customer didn't request the bike carrier, so they got different plans for them or their own bike mounts that they're gonna mount right onto these poles. But below, we installed a 30 inch aluminum cargo box. So lockable, gives you lots of nice storage on the back of the van. 
You can add shelving into here. This is great if you're gonna be carrying firewood, extra fuel, you want sort of like a muddy place to throw all your boots or wet gear, even use it as like a ski locker if you're gonna throw like your, you know, your ski boots and helmets and stuff, just a place where you don't have to put them in the van depending on what it is. It's nice to have this additional storage. Now, while it does make the vehicle longer, one thing to consider is it's up very high, okay? So even if when I go to park a van like this, because these items are so far off the ground, even if there's a car behind me, a lot of times I can go over the top of them with these items, or I'm going over the top of a curb or a planter, something like that. But having this up nice and high, even though it does make the vehicle longer, it doesn't really feel that much longer because of how high these things are up. So just something worth considering, you know, I really like having the additional storage on the outside of the van. And again, having sort of that mud room area to kind of put all that wet, nasty, dirty stuff so I don't have to put it inside the vehicle. Now we can do these in a couple of different ways. We offer dual cargo boxes, single cargo box with the B2 carrier or directly on a rear door mounting plate. So you got some different options depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, we also have vertical bike mount options. Uh, but this is a really well specced out back door. And you know what's great about these things is obviously they swing with the door. So they're mounted directly to the hinges, which allows you to not have to, if you're using like a hitch mount bike rack that has you know dual bike mounting, not only can you not have storage beneath them, but then if the bikes are right here to get access to the back doors, you gotta swing those out of the way or drop them or take them off the rack to then open the doors. So mounting things to the hinges is a great way to add functionality to the back of the van, but make it very you know, easy to use, easy to operate, swing with the door so you can still get access to the back of your van. Last thing I wanted to mention on the back of the van is we added some additional lighting to the roof. Now, typically we have our perimeter roof lighting package. This customer opted, opted to just do the rear lights and not have the additional lights on the passenger and driver side. Now, these are really great for reversing. So for backing up, especially if you're off road or even just in a dark parking lot, sometimes it can be hard to see with this large of a vehicle. So you can power these lights right up from the dash. So when you hit that reverse button, go ahead and kick on those lights, you're gonna get a lot more illumination towards the rear of the vehicle, making it a lot safer and easier for you to back up. The second functionality is obviously, if you're going to be hanging out back here or at a campsite, you got the doors open and you're doing something in the rear, it can make it really easy to see what you're doing if you're loading up gear. So for this particular build, we'll talk more about some interior stuff, but just to show you, with the slide out tray option, if I'm loading up gear and I got all my lights on, it makes it a lot easier for me to see what I'm doing. Load up my bikes in here if I need, or cargo boxes. Maybe I'm doing some outdoor cooking and I got my grill or whatever set up on here. Got my lighting, just makes it a lot more, you know, visibility is a lot better and just gives you that uh, added functionality off the back. So uh, just kind of showcase how, how you might utilize this um, those additional lights up there. All right, last thing to talk about for the exterior of the van is the roof rack. This was the Orion roof rack. This was a new product for us and was client requested. So we're gonna jump up on top and show you some of the features that were added onto the roof of this van. All right, up here on the roof, point out some of the key products that were installed up here. On the back, we have our air conditioning unit. This is a 13,500 BTU unit, 120 volt power. You can see it's pretty low profile, doesn't increase the height of the vehicle too much. We'll talk a little bit more about this on the inside of the van. Up front, we have our additional solar panels. So we squeaked in a two different panels, kind of just Tetris them in with some of the other components. We also have our Starlink. So again, we'll talk a little bit more about some of this stuff when we get on the inside but the Starlink gives us our Wi-Fi internet nationwide, as long as you have line of sight to the sky. So this integrated really well with the Orion rack, low profile flush mount design. And then up front, we have our Max Air fan, which is gonna give us our ventilation and additional cooling up in the front of the vehicle. So really low profile design all in all with the Orion rack, integrates well with the Fiamma awning, attaches right to that guy. And all in all, keeps a very sleek 
design up top. Now there's no walking deck. So this is really just kind of a, gives you the ability to mount additional components up here, but still can't walk around on it. There's no decking to be able to hang out on top of the roof. So, you know, has some great, you know, added versatility with including and mounting these components. But again, might not be one of the products you're looking for depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your roof. Also, you can see we don't have any attachment points to be able to store additional components. So if you're trying to mount a Thule box, carry surfboards or kayaks on the top of the roof rack, this is probably not the ideal rack for you, but you know, probably gives you some good food to chew on here. See the different options that are available when it comes to roof racks. This custom build leaned heavily on the Ultra 144 model for inspiration, but does have some significant changes. That includes this slider extended galley cabinet. On our Ultra 144, this cabinet ends a little bit further back, which allows for DOT approved seating to fit and still maintain a walkway to the back of the van. These customers didn't need any additional DOT seating, so we extended this galley out and added an exterior fold-down table. This is a really nice option here. Brings some of the interior to the exterior, out into nature, allow you to set up, use this for cooking, set drinks up, or whatever else you plan on, you know, kind of using for outside staging but is a nice quick way so you don't have to carry an additional table, set it up every single time, really easy to set up and take down. We also went with a larger drawer 130. So this is the marine grade fridge here. And we oriented it facing towards the front of the van, which gives you access to both sides from both the outside of the van and when the door is shut on the inside. So from this orientation, I can reach in, grab stuff, get access to the freezer up top here and make it really easy to utilize this even when I'm outside the van. Now, again, this is the larger model. This is the 130, so 130 cubic inches inside. So it's one of the larger fridges that, are, that we install in a van. Marine grade, stainless steel, very nice unit. All right, moving on to the shower stall. So lots of stuff packed into this guy. So we'll kind of go bit by bit here. So right off the bat, you can see a little different. If you've seen some of our videos is we have some shelving integrated into the shower stall. So here we mounted some surface mount L-Track along the wall, fabricated and machined these brackets to allow us to quickly remove these shelves. So we can just undo the four star knobs here. And we can slide this whole shelf out. All right, so I popped out that second shelf down here so we could get a little bit better view inside. So with it out, you can see we have the toilet down below. So now with the size of the shower stall, you can't really fit inside the shower when using the toilet. So this is designed to use in place. Um, you can use it with the curtain open or slide this thing out to get a little bit more space but it's really easy, uh, a lot more functional to just kind of use like this. Your knees will stick out the front of the shower stall, uh, but it is a very small space to be able to try and incorporate the full sort of wet bath. On our Ultra 170 model, this shower stall gets another six inches, and then we rotate the toilet 90 degrees, and you can use it fully inside the shower stall. But in a 144, squeezing all of this into there, kind of have to make some sacrifices, and that's one of the places that we do with the toilet. Now, the toilet comes in and out very easily, so when you go to use in the shower mode, unclips, really simple to do. Go ahead and just slide this little retainer clip out, and then the whole thing just lifts out of the sh shower, okay? Set that guy off to the side. Now we have the full shower stall uh, available to us. We have our shower head up top here, and it utilizes some quick disconnect fittings down below, which allow us to quickly take the whole shower hose out. That way it's not flapping around when you're going down the road, so you can kind of store this separately out of the way, it keeps everything nice and quiet. But then when you need it, you can go ahead and clip it in, use the quick disconnect, and then you have your hot and cold um, controls right there. Okay, and the last thing to mention here is the, the heater that's ducted into the shower stall. 
So down here we have our register cover for our heater. Now you can go ahead and just keep that closed so that no hot air comes inside here. And then all of the hot air will come out right here down by my feet, a little hard to see. But we have another register cover right here where we can adjust and have all of the heat come out. So it's uh, teed off two outputs there so you can control how much hot air is going to which location. Okay, but if you've ever spent time in a van or lived out of them full time, finding a way to dry out equipment or you know clothes or towels, especially in winter time, is very difficult. So we came up with this as a solution to our problems, spending a lot of time in vans, is to have this ducted heat in here. And obviously with the l track as well as you'll see some additional mounting points up here with some quick disconnect fittings. So we can utilize these little rings to clip in clothes, hang a line across. You can clip these in to other sections of the L-Track, hang up gear, strap skis in here, whatever you need to do. And then we go ahead and turn the heater on, especially if it's gonna be cold outside or you know, you're doing some winter camping, you're gonna have that heater running. So then we can just go ahead and open up that duct, allow some more heat into the shower stall, close the door, and allow everything to drip dry right down into the gray water tank that's mounted under the vehicle. Okay, so that's just for the drying sort of functionality. Let your gear, all your wet stuff kind of live inside here. But you can also use this as a sauna. So if you totally crank that heater up, this is the Evo 40 unit, so it puts out a ton of hot air. If you crank that all the way up, shut this register cover to the main cabin and open that thing up, We've had it up to 160 degrees inside here. So you can very quickly get this very hot, get inside, get your sweat on, rinse off with the shower, whole new day, right? So it's a lot of functionality baked into this little space here. Uh, so it is a dedicated space to have a shower inside of the van. So you wanna make sure you get the most out of it. And with all these different features and different ways to use it, uh, it can be a really great option, even if it does take up this much space. All right, got the bed pushed back. Looking underneath the van, or underneath the bed here, we have some additional storage in the van. So on this side here, you can see we have some really nice deep storage. We got some additional blankets underneath here. You could have more clothing in here. This is a removable shelf as well. So if you want to store some taller items in here, you can. But we added, designed the shelf in just to make it a little bit more versatile uh, because of how deep it is. Gives you the ability to kind of have things organized and separated if needed. Under the sink, you have access to some of the plumbing um, and connections underneath here. There's a little bit of storage, but mostly it's going to be the sink that you'll see directly underneath there. And then on this side, we have sort of our standard cubby cabinets. We designed these into a lot. Now, the reason these don't have doors on them, they have pretty substantial lips, so things are not gonna be able to you know, slide out when you're driving around. But the reason we don't put doors on these is so if you do have bikes back here or totes or whatever stored underneath the bed, you can still get access to your gear without having to swing a door open to get inside of them. So these cubbies are open face by design to make it a little bit easier to get in and out. Now down below here is where we opted to install the Starlink equipment. So this is our repeaters. So this is what you'll be able to connect your computer or your phone up to. This is the in motion version. So this will allow you to connect and have internet even while driving. I think they've tested this up to 85, 90 miles per hour while driving down the road and it still works just fine. So if you do have passengers or you're working remotely, um, or you know the person in the passenger seat needs to look something up, you don't have good cell reception, you'll be able to connect to your Starlink, to your internet, and have normal internet connection, just like at home. Uh, so it does require some additional plugs in here um, and some additional switches to control to make sure you can turn this off, this unit off and on. But Starlink is certainly a great one to look at uh, if you're gonna be hitting the road and need to maintain that sort of connectivity. Okay, we got some additional storage down here. This is the wheel well down here as well. So we kind of integrated some storage around the wheel well just to give you some additional stuff places here. And then back here is gonna be our electrical system. Um, I'll showcase this one just because of the, how this door opens, but we'll talk more about the electrical system from the rear. But our inverter is housed in here. Obviously lots of venting. Uh, inverter can produce a lot of heat, especially when it's running sort of continuously when it's powering, you know, something like the 
induction cooktop or the air conditioning unit. Um, so I definitely want a lot of good airflow into that guy. Okay, and then we got our utility panel down below, some of our batteries, plumbing system on the other side. So we'll kind of swing around to the back, talk about a little bit of that. All right, so back here in the back of the van, pop these doors open, show you some of the great stuff we got going on in this cargo area down here. So a couple of things I'll point out, we got some additional 120 volt power as well as a cigarette lighter back here and the ability to turn off those load lights from the rear. Now we integrated these power, so especially for like e-bikes or if you need to like inflate a paddle board, you got power right off the back of the van, make it really nice and convenient. If you're traveling with e-bikes, you can plug them in, keep them charged up while you're driving. Uh, so you got full batteries when you get there, okay? Now we'll start with the electrical system here. Uh, you'll see our uh, utility panel here, super clean. We show you kind of what you need access to. We got a lot of equipment behind this panel here. They'll kind of you know, go in detail about what some of those items are doing, but really nice and clean. Uh, keep this very simple interface. You know, essentially it's like the breaker panel at your house, something that you need to access when needed. Uh, but for the most part, it kind of lives where it lives and does what it's supposed to do. And, but we want to make it very user friendly, very easy to kind of find anything that you're going to need to access. Okay. So we got our solar charge controller up top. We got the ability to disconnect our solar so we can very quickly push the red button. Our solar is now disconnected. We can re-engage our solar. We got our 12 volt fuse block. So this has all of our main circuits on here for 12 volt. So our fridge, water pump, Wabasto, um, all of our heater pads, um, fans, reading lights, overhead lights, all that stuff um, powered right off of here, fuses right here. So if you ever need to access them, very easy to get to. And our master battery on off switch. This allows us to de-energize the system very quickly. So if our solar is disconnected, boom, system is off. Uh, that easy. If we want to turn it back on, go ahead and flip it to the on position. Uh, it takes about... You know, a couple of seconds, you see it there, powered on. So now our system is, you know, back up and running. Batteries, really easy to access down below. Magnetic cover right here, pops off. And we have our battery banks down below. This is 600 amp hours of lithium ion batteries. This is the largest system that we do in our 144 chassis. Once we get up into the 170 chassis, we can do up to five of these batteries for a total of 1000 amp hours of total battery capacity. So lithium ions, um, you know, they certainly have gotten much, much more popular in vans today. And so they are very great when it comes to energy density. So that means how much power can I store in this space, in this volume? We found these 200 amp hour batteries to be some of the most energy dense, meaning for the form factor, for the size of that case, they have a ton of capable amp hour storage, okay? So these are 200 amp hours. That means it will power a 200 amp draw item for one hour, or, you know, just kind of give you the math in a different way. If you're powering an item that pulls 100 amps, so our air conditioning units pull very close to that, around 100 amps when they're running on high, max, all out, they pull about 100 amps. You can run those for two hours off of a single battery. Keep in mind with air conditioner units though, they typically have what's called a duty cycle. So they're gonna kick on and off as needed, just like at your house. Typically an air conditioning unit doesn't run 24 hours straight. It's gonna run for 30 minutes and then it's gonna be off for 45 minutes an hour. Then it's gonna run for 30 minutes as the temperature you know, goes up and down. So with a duty cycle like that, right? Every time an air conditioning unit kicks off, the longer you can now run it for. So if it's gonna be 80 degrees out and you want it to be 74 in there, well, you're gonna have a pretty low duty cycle, right? About 25% maybe. So that means out of a one hour period, it's gonna be on for a quarter of the time, right? So about that, you know, 15 minutes or so, it'll be running and then it's off for 45 minutes. So now you can actually run that air conditioning unit, even though it pulls 100 amps while it's running, you multiply it by the amount of time it's actually running for, and you can run that thing for four times as long. So instead of two hours, you can actually run that thing for eight hours off of a single 200 amp hour battery, right? So battery capacity can be a little bit tricky, but you just kind of want to do the math, figure out how much you actually need 
which will tell you how big of a battery bank to actually design into a van, which is what we do really well here. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up this video. Thanks for sticking with us and watching this whole video all the way through. I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully it gave you some good things to think about if you're designing and building your own van or if you're interested in a Titan build. If you want more info on some of the products and models we offer, check us out at www.titanvans.com. Also, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. So until next time, we'll see you on the road.